So when we talk about fit, um, what is the expectations for a panelist? Uh, for your different types of institution or institutions you've been at, what is the expectation for research, um, service, and teaching? And what would you recommend for someone that's on the job market um, applying for your type of institution? I can go first. Uh, I'm happy to go first. So uh, Baylor, um, in general, is um, is an Baylor is an R2 university, and so for those of you who know, it's research two for the Carnegie classification. Um, when Annie and I were talking about this panel before, she said, you know, we've got a nice diversity of institutions here, and we've got a public, some privates, and we've got R ones and R twos, and teaching universities and things. One of the things that's probably true about all most R two universities, and it's certainly true of Baylor, is we're working as hard as we can to become R one. And what that means for the job market is we are hiring people we think ought to be hired at R one universities as well. So um, both in my, so uh, several of us did this. Uh, uh, in order to prepare for this, I went and asked some of my chair, department chair and graduate program director friends. And I said, tell me the portfolio of the folks you've hired in the last five years. A and some themes began to emerge. Um, so on the humanities side, um, the themes that emerged, um, of course, were publications. Um, everybody who came, you know, had publications. Most of them had published um, while, they were in, uh, while they were in graduate school. Um, but also, um, in one of the programs, she said, uh, she was the graduate program director, and she said, you know, of seven of the last nine people we hired on the tenure track, this was their second job. So they had started typically, often at a small liberal arts college someplace, and they were coming for us uh, as a second job uh, in, to a tenure track position. Um, so they have publications from that area too. One of the things that, that they look for is, are you able to take on the teaching responsibilities of full-time faculty and continue publications? Um, but the teaching is really important, particularly on the humanities side. So they said, we're looking for a rich amount of teaching experience. Um, a clear research trajectory. And then the most interesting theme that came up on the humanities side was the service. Um, um, one person said it this way, she said, it was the same, this is the same graduate program director, she said, we look for people who are already engaging in professional societies in an appropriate level. So that can be engaging in the regional version of whatever your professional society is or had been involved in student level um, for, uh, committees on the professional society or she said what, one of the things that counted was service at the university. So UT has something like a graduate student association or something like that. And it was interesting I, why that came up um, uh, on the humanities side, because it didn't come up on the STEM side. So I've talked to several STEM folks, and they said, absolutely, you have to have publications. And yes, um, um, I didn't talk to a, I talked to two STEM chairs and a graduate program director, and they said all of our recent hires um, have had postdocs to demonstrate their research chops someplace. But in, in addition to demonstrating their research chops, to demonstrate that their research was fundable, that they could secure external grants for their research. Um, and they said, of course, you wouldn't be expected, most of you as graduate students, um, and most of you even as in a postdoc role, you're not going to be expected to be a PI um, on a grant. But you would be expected to have a connection to and to talk about the experiences that you've learned about being able to secure um, funding for the research that you've done. I, say, I asked, what about teaching? And um, on the STEM side, and they said, we don't expect a lot of teaching experience on the STEM side. You just don't typically get that, particularly as a graduate student and certainly not as a, not as a postdoc. But they said, we do look for somebody, so we don't expect to see that on the resume, but when we get to the interview stage, we expect to see somebody who has the presence and command of the room and the audience that they're in to demonstrate kind of vicariously, that they would be good teachers, that they would be able to be in a lecture-style classroom um, and to teach um, and to teach well. So that's, and then if part of the pro question is about the expectations on the tenure track, all of those things would, con would count. Research, of course, is at the, f at the forefront, and so is teaching, particularly a place like Baylor, um, that has, uh, is a predominantly undergraduate institution undergraduate teaching is, is very important. Service for tenure track professors, they are, almost all of them are protected from university service. Um, and um, again, on the STEM side, uh, one of the chairs said, in fact, we would discourage 
a significant amount of disciplinary, like national uh, organization service until they're an associate professor. They just really need to be focused on grants and publications and citations and those kinds of things. In community college, as you all would probably expect, the expectations for a professor is going to be teaching in service. Generally, at community colleges, when you design your curriculum, the curriculum is going to be a little bit more standardized because part of how community colleges get their footing with legislators and funding and all that is they have some kind of standard curriculum that makes them more transferable to four-year universities. So, for example, your textbook for the class might either be predetermined or it might, you might only be able to pick from a list. So if you want to do like, I want to do interpersonal and I want to talk about Foucault and I want them to read, you know, bio, bio, blah, 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 you may not be able to do that. You have to use one of the textbooks from the list. So part of your teaching expectations is that you also follow the departmental curricula that are established. So that might be using the established textbooks. In our department, there's also required assignments you have to give in each class. So with community college, it is a little bit, you don't have the same level of freedom in terms of, like, you can decide how you do things, but there might be some things that you have to do in your class, okay? So that's going to be part of your expectations as a community college professor. When you go up for evaluation, the evaluators will then look at your syllabi and look at your sample assignments to make sure that they're meeting the criteria that are set forth by the department. But you still do get a lot of freedom, it's just, it's like a limited freedom. And then, of course, service. With service, at least in my department, we do all our service together, just a lot of things like to, we review curriculum. So if you don't like something in a curriculum, you can be part of that curriculum committee and then kind of argue for why we should change something. And that's cool. So there's a lot of curriculum committees basically. And then like there's service for like getting the department more majors and such. So that like departmental service basically. And then of course there's college-wide service too. You can be on a college-wide committee, you can be on faculty senate, and then professional development hours. So another big difference between I think community college and at least the four years that I've been at, the community college really emphasizes professional development and training hours. So I think the number of credits I had to do is 15 for the first semester or is nine it was nine nine the first semester so like you basically have to do these online things or you have to do talks or you have to do this established list of things to stay current on the latest pedagogy the latest diversity initiatives and such so it's just a larger load of professional development hours that you do but you get a lot of choice when you do them how you do them and so forth and it's generally a good thing when applying your cv diversity statement, teaching philosophy, cover letter, those are going to be like your main materials. You don't have to do a research statement, obviously. And the interview is also different in community college. I don't know if we're not on that topic yet, but those would probably be the key documents. But that's what you would also expect as a community college professor. A, a bigger teaching load, more service, more professional development. Research, you can put it on your evaluation, and I can still get like a high five, but there's just no like, you know, oh, you did three publications, so you get three stars and more, more money. No, no. But I did get a paper published. I'm going to put it on my evaluation just to show scholarly activity, but I just don't get paid for it. Okay? Yeah. Um, OSU is a Research One institution, and so obviously research is pretty important to us, and I would say that it is probably heavily weighted for any uh, candidate that has publications. In some areas, um, that's a basic expectation that you have something. In some areas like humanities, even education, I would say that um, having a research agenda, an articulated research agenda, is what's important. And I find that that, with new faculty, I work with new faculty in the Teaching and Learning Center, and we, we run an early orientation program and the support program for them. And what I find is that that's where they really struggle, is to articulate an agenda. Not a, I did a dissertation and this is what it is. Your dissertation is, you know, it's just your ticket to play in the party. It is not the end of your career as a researcher. And yet what we see is faculty, or faculty candidates come in and all they can talk about is their dissertation. And so thinking about that, and that doesn't mean you can't move beyond your dissertation, expand on that, but your agenda, which is a bigger, what are the big questions you want to answer? I and mean, within that, those big questions, what are the research 
projects you will do, that's an agenda. And I think people struggle with figuring that part out of it and they can't articulate it than when they're on campus. So really think bigger picture. Your dissertation's important, don't get me wrong. And, and for those of you that publish it, fantastic, you should. Um, but that is really the beginning of your research, not the end. And so thinking about it that way and expressing that um, in your letter of application and when you're on campus is really, really important. And, and I think it's important because it starts to help you us see you as a scholar. So at OSU, every year you have to do an annual report of your progress. And you have to write who you are as a researcher. You also have to write who you are as a teacher and who you are in terms of a service agent. If, that, if you think about it that way when you're preparing for a job interview, I think what will happen is we'll see you as a faculty member, as a potential colleague, and see you as a new graduate. And I think that's really important. I think sometimes people come in and, and you've been a student for a while and you've, you know, you've interacted with faculty and they've been your mentors, but now you're coming and you want, we want you to be a colleague. We're not looking for you to be our mentee. I mean, we will help you, but I think that's really important that you have to kind of walk the walk and talk the talk. So be thinking about that. We definitely, if you have publications, want to see those to see your potential. Certainly in the sciences and engineering, um, grant potential is pretty critical, and they're going to look at that. So if you've been involved in grants, I was really lucky that the institution that I got my doctorate in, they were heavily involved in grant writing, and I, 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 I'm not lying when I say I bet I wrote 30 grants in two years. So I got a lot of grant writing experience, and that really did help me. Um, so thinking about those, those sorts of things, I think, is really important. Another thing that's become more important on our campus is teaching, because we see that as a, as a retention um, part of keeping students on our campus and keeping them and helping them be successful. And so many of our colleges have started having candidates teach for them. So they put you in a class. Um, you, you might step into you know, a section of biochemistry, and this is what they're supposed to talk about today, and you're about to teach that class. And you'll know about it ahead of time, I promise. But I think what that allows us to see is really, do, one, can you express content and communicate to students in effective ways? Are you confident in your teaching? And that gives us a chance to see that. So I think that's been a really beneficial thing. And I will say that there are people that have not gotten jobs because they look like good researchers, but they were not good teachers, at least in that moment, they could not do a, a presentation in front of students that was effective. So we're really looking at both of those. Again, research is probably going to tip over towards that end, but teaching is pretty important to us now.